So, um, homework problems for 12-4 for, uh, here. Number five, I'll just, I'll just write it up here. If 0 is less than or equal to n times a to the n is less than 1, or less than 1, 0 less than n a n, less than 1 for all n, then the sum uh, a n converges. And so let me just let me just state this in another way. So this inequality, this chain of inequalities here. Right, if you divide that, so the, everything's positive here, right? So if you divide by n, you get zero still, right? Mm -hmm. It's less than a sub n, less than one over n. One over n right? And so the question is, that if anything is, is smaller than one over n, does it necessarily converge? That's what it's saying, right? So uh, the answer is false, and so we should come up with a counterexample that shows why that's true. So remember, when we talk about p-series, we have right, the series of 1 over n to the p converges if p is greater than 1 and diverges if p is less than or equal to 1. And so you can't really just make this a n some other p-series. You've got to make some other tweak on it, so something that's just a little bit smaller than this but you still get infinity when you add it all up. Does that make sense? That's what you're trying to find. Um, and so if you just pick this to be um, 1 over n plus 1, right? that's smaller than 1 over n, but that sum diverges, right? Mm -hmm. And so it's not true that this being true makes that converge. Does that make sense? And you um, still can get some answer like 1 over n squared. Right, I mean, there's. still converge. Right, but when, it, when you see a statement that says, if this is true, then that's true. That means any time this is true, it forces this to be true. And okay. so if you can find one example where it's not, then, then you're good. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah, you definitely have examples that, will, that sit in here where it is true. But if you can find any one that's not, then, then we want false there. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Uh, any other questions on this one? Yeah. So let's see the reflection 31. diverges. Um, I guess there's might be a couple different ways to go about this, but especially in this section, all we were doing was taking a series, right, or the terms of the series, and we were figuring out what they sort of act like, right? And so one, we'll just act like one up top, so that's fine. What about the bottom? As n gets big, which one of those is going to control the behavior? Four to the n or n to the fourth? Four to the, four to the n. I use n to Okay, so you should use 4 to the n. Remember, exponentials grow faster than polynomials. And so for the first few values, this might be true, right? When n is, well, when n is 2, I guess you're the same, right? When n is 3, you get, what, 81 and 64. So this one's a little smaller for small values, but if you think of a million, 4 to the million power is going to be much bigger than a million that make sense? Yeah, I was just confused because for some reason I, I was thinking do P series and just take one over and forth. Well, actually, I'm going to do I'm going to do another thing too here. But if if we're using sort of that idea that I was saying before is let's figure out what this behaves like. The correct way is to, to do this. Now there's another way to get around it, but. Uh, Let's, let's do this first. Does that make sense? So we're saying this grows faster than that, so we're going to just be pretend it behaves like that. And so now we take what? The limit comparison test. So we take the limit of, of the series 
series that we are asked about, right? Divided by, I should say, the terms of the series, divided by the terms of the one we're comparing it to. And so that gives us And I guess at this point you really could could just say, right, you know that those exponential things are going to dominate the polynomial and so it's going to behave like 4 to the n over 4 to the n. If you wanted to show some work, right, you could just do this sort of game again, right, which would give you 1 up here, 1, and then n to the 4th over 4 to the n. And again, I don't want you to do for L'Hopital's rule to realize that's zero, but you should see polynomial divided by exponential goes to zero. Right? And so that whole thing goes to one. We're in the middle of the limit comparison test, so what do we want to be true? We want this limit to be no, to be non-zero, right? right? We want to show that these guys act the same, well, I guess these two series act the same, right? And so we want to say their limit is non-zero, which it is, right? And so now the limit comparison test, oh, and we also should mention, does that series converge or diverge? Converge. Converge. Let's read it like that. And so what kind of series is it? Geometric. Geometric. Oh, I should say. Converge is right. Geometric series with R one fourth, something like that. Does that make sense? <coughs> and then you can say, okay, so this uh, converges, they behave the same, therefore the series we were looking at, one over four to the n plus n to the fourth converges by the limit. So if you were asked this question, I think this is the best way to go about it, like we just did here. There's all kinds of alternatives you could have done. Uh, so if you're just trying to decide if it converges or diverges, you could have noticed. So we just say alternate solution. And I won't go through all the details here, but I'll just mention what you could have done. You could have said that this was less than, I'll just say less than or equal to 1 over 4 to the n and just use the ordinary comparison test because you know this converges and so if the bigger thing converges, the smaller thing does, right? And then use uh, what's it, what's it called? the direct comparison test, right? You could have also done the same thing with the n to the fourth. Right? And that, we also know that converges because it's a P-series, and so you could have done another direct comparison test there as well. Now, the reason you need to be careful is because if, if I just replace this with N instead of N to the fourth, right, this statement would still be true over here, but then that's useless, right? Knowing that 1 over N diverges doesn't force the smaller thing to diverge. Um, and so with this one, there's definitely multiple approaches you could have used, but I'd say this is sort of the most foolproof thing. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So, 35 here. Um, So it's e to the negative n plus 1. Now, let's see. OK, let's just approach this and pretend or act like we don't see what's going on. Okay? If, you don't, if you don't see, because you might eventually, when you see this thing, you'll immediately know the answer. But it takes a little while before you get comfortable with, with seeing all that stuff. Um, what's the first term going to be if I plug in 1? What will I get? 0. Well, e to the 0, right? Which is 1. Yeah. And then plus, what happens when I plug in 2? E to the 
2, so oh, one negative, one. Negative, negative 1, right? E to the negative 1 or 1 over E would be fine. What about when you plug in 3? Negative 2 and so on, right? So I would say that it's even easier just to view this guy like that, right? Uh, let me write it this way. You're making it 1 over e to the n minus 1. So what kind of series is that? That's geometric series, right? Yeah. And it's a geometric series. It's already in the right form. And so there's really no other work you need to do. It's geometric because 1 over e is less than 1. Because of one of well, it's, it's geometric regardless of what it is, but it's geometric and converges because 1 over e is less than 1. Okay. So it's geometric with r equal to 1 over e, which is less than 1. But again, if, if it was greater than 1, it's still geometric, and we could conclude that it diverged. But since it is less than 1, then we conclude that it converges. So it's a, therefore, it converges. Okay. Does that make sense? Okay. 